this gap. He's going to be passing the, the service course cars right behind these guys. They have to watch out for these massive potholes that are in the road. As you see Cadell Evans now on the right-hand side of the screen, making his way solo up to the back of the Shimano car. The, the Tour of Utah lead Commissar vehicle now has to get out of the way because Cadell Evans is going to rip right by these guys before they even know what happened. Yeah, and there you see right now Horner's on the front, Tom Danielson followed by Wilco Kettleman. Winner Anacona's not quite comfortable staying very close to Wilco Kettleman's wheel. Where is the red comet from BMC, Cadell Evans? He is falling from the sky and he's burning up the atmosphere as he's trying to make his way down to Winner Anacona's rear wheel. He will be coming by that that cameraman from TV Motor International so fast that he may drive and fly right past him. Here comes Cadell Evans, the red comet for BMC, Tim. Flying past the Commissar's car right there, trying to take a little bit of a draft. All of these potholes on the road are right in the apexes of the corners. It's such an awkward positioning that you have to watch out as you hit them. These guys are on a closed road. They can drift left and they can drift right. No big deal. Chris Horner standing and pedaling. This is that last bit of flat stretch. They're gonna make they're gonna make a left-hand turn as they make a very, very steep drop. It's gonna be a couple K of full speed arrow tuck position, but Cadell Evans making this catch. They don't know he's there. Watch on a section where it's super, super steep on the descent. He will blow by them. Watch for that moment. Look, he's setting up so that he's getting about 10 feet of space, and then when there's an opportunity, Cadell Evans more than likely will just go by them, and they'll be like last year, like Tom Danison, like, where did he come from? He spent the energy, Tim. When does he hit him? They're gonna make a, a series of left-hand turns before they start this very, very steep pitch down. This first left is not that hard at all. The second one is gonna be a little bit harder as they come around the corner. After that, it is a very, very fast descent. Cadell Evans obviously finishing off the job of catching these guys on this descent, but now it's up to him to try and win the stage. If he goes back to back for stage wins, that will cancel out Lompre. They, they do not get a stage win. If he can beat Tom Danielson, it's going to try and protect what happened the other day at Powder Mountain when Tom Danielson went away solo. It's going to be Cadell trying to go for the double here as we finish this descent all the way down at 65 plus K an hour into Park City. A great replay right there as Cadell. Here's the problem. Cadell is not comfortable being behind these guys. He's a much better descender. He's faster. He's reached down, Tim tightened up his bootstraps on his right foot, tightened up the bootstraps on his left foot. That's an indication that he's going to go, and he's going to go at any second right now because he's got full contact with the pedals. The finish is uphill. The finish is two left-hand turns as they come into Salt into uh, Park City here. It's going to be an extremely tight left, followed by another tight left, and a very, very short uphill pitch to the finish line. This is going to be ripe for Cadell Evans. He's watched these guys try and drop him on the uphill. They've made a very good attempt. He's done all he could on this descent to try and take that gap back, and he has. He's leaving that nice gap there. You can see what's happened. He does not feel the pressure of the other guys. All he feels now is the pressure to win this stage by taking these guys right into the final two corners and winning out of this group of now five riders. They're off the technical session section of the climb. So there's no need for him to take a risk right now because they'll just chase him down or some of the riders. What he's doing, he's the best sprinter out of the group. So why not save it? He, there's no more technical aspect of the race course. It's a straight drag in. Why not go? I think he's a better sprinter. Two left-hand corners that are very steep. They have to go through a roundabout here. They have to rip by a couple curb sections as they get closer to Park City. You can see the city laying out in front of them. It's all on the left-hand side. They're going to make these two 90-degree left-hand turns with a slight uphill to the finish. So it is technical. This is difficult. Wilco Kelderman had taken a very mediocre pull in the front, really lackadaisical as he realized that what was his future is probably not winning the stage as long as Cadell Evans is now sitting in the back here. One K to go, almost all of it downhill except for that final, final pitch now going through the outskirts of Park City. The town is a buzz. Everyone is waiting. This is that final roundabout as they make their way into Park City. Yeah, and you'll see right now there is going to be a big fight on the front. The bigger question is who makes that final and fateful move to try to get the win as they had seen the flam rouge. Carter Jones, and you see right now Cadell Evans is shaking the legs out. He's trying to wind it up. Who has seen the video of last year? Who has seen how this finish really plays out? Do they know that if you lead through the corner, you're probably going to win? We saw Tom Danielson not lead through it last year. Honey Acevedo had passed him on the descent, and sure enough, Cadell Evans goes for the lead of the 
five riders now leading into these final two corners. He is going to be nearly impossible to beat as Cadell Evans making his way up the final stretch. Trying to fight through his wheels, Kellerman Evans has hit him on a technical turn. Cadell Evans is going to go what appears to be back to back. He wins stage.